Hello everyone, I'm Mark Witch, and today I'm going to be reading you a fairly well-known story, but it's a favorite from when I was a child. She was beautiful in a strange, mysterious way. Her hair and her deep, bottomless eyes were as black as the velvet ribbon around her neck. He planned to marry her before the next full moon rose in the autumn sky. On their wedding, he watched her walk up towards him down the long aisle. She was dressed in a white gown, a white veil, and carried a bouquet of white flowers. Even her face was ivory white, but below it, around the pale neck, was a black velvet ribbon. He remembered staring at that ribbon as the strains of the wedding march brought his bride nearer to him. He remembered the curious and shocked look on the faces of the wedding guests, but then his eyes met hers and he was drowning in their bottomless darkness. He didn't think of the velvet ribbon during the rest of the wedding day. It was a joyous time, and if people thought his wife was a bit strange, they kept it to themselves. That night there alone, he saw that ribbon was still there, circling her lovely neck. Don't you ever take that ribbon from around your neck? He asked, hoping his question was a needless one. You'll be sorry if I do, the wife answered, so I won't. Her answer disturbed him, but he did not question her any further. There was plenty of time for her to change her ways. Their life together fell into a pleasant pattern. They were happy, as most newlywed couples are. He found her to be the perfect wife. Well, nearly perfect. Although she had a great number of dresses and wore a different one every day, she never changed the black velvet ribbon. This ribbon began to test their marriage. When he looked at her, his eyes would inevitably fall on her neck. When he kissed her, he could feel the ribbon tightening around his own throat. Won't you please take that ribbon from around your neck, he asked her time and time again. You'll be sorry if I do, so I won't. This was always her answer. At first it teased him, but then it began to grate on his nerves, and now it began infuriating him. You'll be sorry if I do. You'll be sorry if I do. One day he tried to pull the ribbon off after she had repeated her answer like a mechanical doll. It wouldn't come loose from her neck. He realized then, for the first time, the ribbon had no beginning and no end. It circled her neck like a band of steel. He had drawn back from her in disgust that day. Things weren't the same with them after that. At the breakfast table, the black ribbon seemed to mock him as he drank his suddenly bitter coffee. In the afternoon, outside, the ribbon made a funeral out of the sunlight. But it was at night when it bothered him the most. He knew he could live with it no longer. Either take that ribbon off or I will, he said one night to his wife of only four weeks. You'll be sorry if I do, so I won't, she smiled at him and then fell asleep. But he did not sleep. He lay there, staring at that hated ribbon. As she lay sleeping, unsuspecting, he crept out of bed and over to her sewing box. He had seen a small, sharp pair of scissors there. It was thin enough, he knew, to slip between the velvet ribbon and her soft neck. Gripping the scissors in his trembling hands, he walked back to the bed. He came up to where she lay and stood over her. Her head was thrown back on the pillow and her throat, with the black velvet ribbon around it, rose ever so slightly with her breathing. He bent down, and with one swift movement, he forced the thin blade of the scissors under the ribbon, and then a quick triumphant snip, he severed the ribbon that had come between them. The black velvet ribbon fell away from his wife's neck, and her head rolled off the bed and landed on the floor with a thump. She was muttering, You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. The end. <laughs>
it's so silly, it's so spoopy, it's one of my um, favorite uh, stories from when I was younger, and it is actually why I wear a black choker around my neck. Although, if mine comes off, my head's not going to fall off, but it is what inspired it. Anyways, see ya. Bye!